Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. In college, I was a journalism major, and I worked on the school newspaper uh, in a variety of ways over those years, which I enjoyed. I was a uh, staff cartoonist, the editorial cartoonist. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was, uh, I actually made money pasting up ads in the paper, you know, where you actually had to cut things out and put them together. That, that's a dead industry right there. <laughs> um, one year, of course, I was taking journalism classes, but one year I was also the features editor of the Parthenon, the Marshall University school paper. And it was a daily paper. And so we would work in the evenings to put the paper together. One evening, I uh, was putting the features page together, cutting and pasting and, and all that. You may have heard this story. Uh, the, the school <coughs> paper editor was a bespectacled, goateed, earnest young man who had an opinion on everything. Uh, and he and the entertainment reporter frequently butted heads. And their personalities were like oil and vinegar or maybe more like kindling and matches. <laughs> um, one evening, as I was working, this entertainment reporter had written a, kind of a, 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 a negative review of a controversial performer of the day. I don't remember what it was about, but he had submitted it to the editor. The editor was in his office, which was behind these huge glass windows, and there was a big newsroom. We were all out with the, with the U-shaped table, and then big typewriters. They were electric. This wasn't that long ago. Um, and that's where we wrote our stories and, and so forth. So all of a sudden the editor called the entertainment reporter into his office. And we couldn't hear them, but we could see them through those windows. And we were kind of glancing over because we could tell they were getting into a very fierce argument about this article, gesticulating and red faces and and all sorts of things. And then we saw that the editor took the, the report that the entertainment writer had done and just ripped it to shreds and threw it in his face. I mean, the guy was like, you know, he could not believe it. So he stormed out of the office and we were like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so we get back to work, you know, trying to act like everything's normal. And then all of a sudden we notice the guy's just kind of standing there muttering to himself, the entertainment guy. And then suddenly he just picks up an electric typewriter and throws it through the window. <laughs> and you can imagine the chaos of that noise. He, the editor did jump out of the way, thankfully. Uh, and we were stunned that this article had engendered that much anger at the editor that, you know, to have possibly injured him. Well, by the time we realized what was going on, the entertainment editor was on the floor like catatonic, and some of us went to check on him, others went to check on the editor. We still had a newspaper to get out. <laughs> But uh, before long, an ambulance came and took the entertainment editor away, and uh, he never, well, he lost his job there, let's just <laughs> put, let's put it that way. Um, what, what causes angry outbursts like that? You know, sometimes people just snap. And in our culture, we tend to be surrounded by anger. Uh, of course, we never have that problem, <laughs> but we see it in so many others on, on the roads, on the highways. You, you hear reports of road rage that just explodes and, and lives are even lost over the fact that somebody just cut somebody off in traffic. Our, our TV and radio, you have all this contentious debate and argument and anger. So 
Our lives are filled with that. Our, if we're on Facebook, sometimes we get into arguments there. It can turn very angry. It's, it's, not, it's not pleasant. Uh, and, and then there even in our own lives, there could be some kind of silly little disagreement with someone we love in our family or a coworker or even a friend that, that just takes a turn and all of a sudden you're yelling at each, each other, but there's some anger or some fear that's been built up and it just erupts. And it's like, where did that come from? Well, you know, we think about Jesus, and we, we tend to have this picture of, you know, he's so cool and quiet and calm and meek and mild. And, and then in today's gospel, we, we see him erupt. But there's another side of anger that we have to look at. You know, this, this eruption of anger like that entertainment reporter, that's one thing. But there's another side of that coin of anger, and that is righteous anger. Righteous anger can give us the courage to do what we might not otherwise do. Uh, it can help us to overcome the paralysis of fear in a situation of injustice. It can help us find uh, an outspokenness against <coughs> evil to rebuke injustice. Robert Law, one of my favorite writers of the 19th century, he wrote, like all natural emotions, anger is in itself neither good nor bad. It is merely a force, a gunpowder of the soul, which, according as it is directed, may blast away the obstructions of evil or defend us from temptation as with a wall of fire, or which again may work devastating injury to our own or another's life. Well, throughout the Gospels, we see Jesus expressing anger at the religious leaders who are hypocrites. He does that verbally. But in this one incident that's recorded in all four Gospels, which is very unique, Jesus puts his holy rage into action. In Matthew 21, in Luke 19, and in Mark 11, this encounter in the temple where Jesus overturns the tables comes relatively late in Jesus' ministry. It's, it's the climax of his anger against the religious authorities who are misusing their position as God's leaders of the people for selfish gain and they have just run them up. But in John's gospel, which we just heard, this incident comes almost at the beginning of Jesus' ministry. So Jesus is making clear from the outset that he intends to overturn the corrupt, self-serving religious status quo. Jesus goes to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover, the Jewish feast, the pilgrim feast where all Jewish males were expected to, to attend. And he comes to the temple, the very heart of Jewish life and culture, to worship, just as he should. But what he sees there makes his blood boil. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. But what's going on? I mean, why does he erupt so much that he then makes a whip of cords? He drives all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also pours out the coins of the money changers, overturns their tables, and he tells those who are selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. Well, why is Jesus so furious that he takes this action? Well, perhaps it's more about what isn't happening at the temple of God. It's hardly a place of peace and serenity and welcome that's conducive to the reverent worship of Almighty God. In fact, the scene is anything but worshipful. What's going on here that Jesus realized is that the re religious leaders 
course, the, the laws of God require that you would bring offerings of whatever animal from a dove you know, to a bird to a sheep or, or cattle of other sort. And it had to be unblemished because God is holy. So they would bring their animal carefully selected to fulfill the laws of God. Well, the religious authorities would say, mm, I see a blemish on your animal. Not, not good enough. You have to buy an animal from here. And then they couldn't use their own coin of the realm, the Roman coins, because they had, what, a graven image of the emperor on the coin. So then they had to go to the money changers, who would change that money into uh, coins from Tyre, which had no image on the coins. Well, they had to pay a big fee to do that, of course. And then they had to pay for the other animals. So it's a big scam. And I'm sure they would take the animal that that one person would bring, put it in the, the little area, and then give it to somebody else. So it, it was a huge scam. And they were making all kinds of money on it. So the faithful had to pay these exorbitant fees to exchange their money and, and so to worship God. They could not worship God and fulfill the law until they ran this gamut of scammers. So what God had set forth as a means to enter the divine presence in worship and in spiritual growth, growth had been corrupted into a tawdry money-making business enterprise. So Jesus is just bitterly angry at the hypocrisy, the cheapening of God's grace to make a profit. And that's one reason why Jesus is so angry. Well, we heard the Ten Commandments this morning as well. And think about it. How many of those Ten Commandments were those so-called religious <laughs> leaders breaking with this process? Now, they were known to be sticklers to every jot and tittle of the law. That's why they would not accept these graven image coins. And yet, they weren't honoring the Lord their God and what they were doing. They were making money an idol. They were stealing from the people. They were bearing false witness, lying against these faithful people. They were coveting what these people had. You know, I bet they even made their own fathers and mothers pay up this way. Breaking the honor of your father and mother commandment. By, by my count, that's a failure rate of at least 70% of the Ten Commandments. <laughs> And so Jesus responds with this whip-cracking fury. And you can imagine the chaos that ensues. And, and maybe more biting than that whip crack was his words against the religious leaders. Jesus' mission is to liberate human souls, to draw them into the reign of God and the community of the faithful, into a loving and selfless way of life. He's after what matters to God. And so he reveals the dishonesty in the midst of the people. He fights injustice and oppression. He causes change. He sets things right. And undergirding every expression of his anger is actually love. You know, when we express anger, it often comes out of fear. But not Jesus. His is a righteous anger. It comes out of love. He, he speaks the truth in love. His love of God, zeal for the ways of God, the true worship of God, his mission to open the reign of God to all who come together make him indignant at what dishonors God and whatever hinders others from knowing and experiencing God's love. Now, brothers and sisters, today, what should we be righteously angry about for God's sake? 